Yellow Light of Death, a very annoying problem for PS3s. A lot of people still have some misunderstandings about Yellow Light of Death. Recently, Felix has made a really good video explaining this problem. You should definitely watch his video first. My video would be more like a condensed version of his video. That is, what should you do when you face Yellow Light of Death? Yellow Light of Death means general hardware failure. Sony implement this feature that whenever you boot up your PS3, it will do a series of tests. If your PS3 failed to pass any of the tests, it will record down the error, stop the boot up process, and give out a notorious flashing yellow LED indicator followed by three beeps. The yellow light of death itself does not give any specific meaning. It does not mean BJ problems, nor NEC tokens problems. It simply means something is wrong during the boot up process. To make sense of the flashing yellow LED light, we need some help from Syscon, a very useful diagnostic tool that everyone can use now thanks to this guy. To extract the Syscon error log, we need to take apart the PS3 and then attach this tiny chip called TTL to the motherboard to send some commands and extract the error lot that we want. If you are not familiar with PS3 Syscon, I recommend you to read this amazing tutorial written by Felix. It is a very comprehensive tutorial covering both cases where your console can or cannot be turned on. Here, I will show you the case when your console cannot be turned on. Finally, the motherboard is exposed to us. Depending on the model of the motherboard, there are different ways to extract the Syscon errors. In my case, I'm working on a CECXL console, and the motherboard type is VEL001. In this model, there is only internal access mode for the Syscon, and therefore, we only need to use the TX and RX pads. Now, I'm soldering two jumper wires to the two pads, so that we can connect them to our TTL chip. The connection is simple. TX pad goes to the TX pin, and RX pad goes to the RX pin of the TTL. If you are using exactly the same TTL as mine, you should be able to see the pin labels here. Plug the jumper wires to the right pins. After that, connect another jumper wire to the ground pin of the TTL. And finally, connect the TTL to the computer using a USB cable. Even though we don't need to turn on the PS3 to extract the error log, we still need to supply 5 volts to the motherboard. To do that, we can simply plug the power supply back to the console and make our PS3 into standby mode. Finally, ground the TTL using any method that you like. I'm lazy, so I always ground my TTL like this. It's simple, but it works. Next, we will use a computer to send commands to our PS3 to extract the syscon error. I have all the Python dependencies installed inside my Python virtual environment called syscon. And then, go inside a folder containing the Python script for extracting the syscon errors. To authenticate and communicate with the PS3, run this command. Since my motherboard version is VEL001, the SW command is used. However, different commands are used for different motherboard types. So, always check the motherboard model and pick the right command to use. Finally, we can use this command to extract the error history. This error history tells us the true reason behind the yellow light of death. The error code can be broken down into three segments. We can ignore the first segment since it always starts with A0. The second segment indicates the step number, and the last segment contains the four-digit error code. You can always check this wiki page to find the meaning of each error code. The error codes that you are likely to encounter would be 1002, which corresponds to the bad NEC tokens on the RSX side, or 3034, which corresponds to BGA or bump gate problems. You should fix your console depending on the error code. It is not always the NEC token problem or always the GPU problem. There is no one-size-fits-all solution for the yellow light of death. Luckily, for this particular console, we don't see any 3034 error in the syscon. That means the GPU is still healthy in this console. Let's handle one of the error codes that we see, that is the 1002 error. Since 1002 is related to the NEC token on the GPU side, let's try replacing one of the tokens with our new capacitors. There are many ways to remove the NEC tokens, and this is the method that I'm comfortable with. Feel free to leave a comment and tell me the method that you use.
Once the original NEC token is removed, it's time to put on some new capacitors. Our replacement capacitors are longer than the positive and the ground terminals, so we need to grind away some of the solder mask to create a larger ground plane. Clean up the soldering area and then apply some flux to make the soldering easier. Always use capacitors with a low ESR value as the replacement. If you don't like grinding away the solder mask, there are other better alternatives such as this custom circuit board designed by Felix. I will put a link below so that you can check it out yourself. Once the soldering is done, it is better to double check if all solder joints are solid. Let's have a quick test to see if it works. It works. At this point, I know some of you will say, hey, this fix won't last long, or the problem is never the tokens. These are the misconceptions that I mentioned at the very beginning of this video that many people are having now. Let me clarify a bit more. Yellow light of death is never due to a single cause. It can be due to any hardware problem during the build up process. To pinpoint the exact problem, we need to use the syscon, a system that is officially built in in the PS3. For example, in this particular console, we have 1002, which is an indication that this PS3 has a bad NEC token on the GPU side. However, many people like to suddenly jump to the conclusion that all yellow light of death can be fixed by changing the capacitors. This is completely wrong. Yellow light of death does not necessarily mean capacitor problems. At the same time, Yellow light of death can be also caused by the BGA or bump gate problem of the GPU. This statement has no contradiction with my previous statement about the bad NEC tokens, because yellow light of death is not always a GPU problem. The key takeaway here is, always check syscon before fixing your console. Only syscon can tell you the true reason behind the yellow light of death. I know some of you will say, but Felix said the underfill in the bump gate is the real cause of yellow light of death. It is true that the underfill problem affects the early PS3 models a lot. But according to the statistics published by Felix, GPU problems only account for 50% of the yellow light of death, not 100%. Yellow light of death can be due to any reason. It can be the GPU or the capacitors or other problems. This pie chart is based on different models of PS3, mostly for the early backward compatible models. His statistics also includes the most commonly seen syscon error, which is 3034. And interestingly, the second mostly seen error is 1002. If the GPU problem is so common, why can people keep their console running for years by simply changing the capacitors? The answer is related to the PS3 model. First, you need to understand that not all PS3 are using the same GPU. The 90 nanometer GPU with bump gauge underfill problem is used in early models from CECHA all the way to CECHH. According to Felix statistics, this GPU has over 50% failure rate. A slightly better version of this GPU, 65 nanometer, is used in later models from CECXJ to CECXQ and early slim models. According to my statistics, this GPU has only around 20% failure rate, which is much better than the 90 nanometer one. The 40 nanometer GPU is used by later slim models and super slim models. This GPU revision is much more reliable than the previous GPU designs. That's why in the Frankenstein mod, people always like to swap the 90 nanometer GPU with the 40 nanometer one. A successful swap produces a very reliable backward compatible PS3. Nonetheless, you can see that as we move from the left to the right, we are less likely to face a GPU problem. When the GPU is reliable enough, it is very likely that the yellow light of death is caused by the capacitors, or no yellow light of death at all. This explains why changing the capacitors is still potentially a long-term fix, especially when your console model is the one with the 65 or 40 nanometer GPU. 
Felix statistics reflects the yellow light of death causes for the early models, but we don't have enough data samples for later models such as slim or super slim. That's why I created this Google form to collect more data. In this form, you can provide your PS3 type and the exact model number, including the region code such as 00 or 01. After that, you should also tell us about the syscon error log so that we can study the most likely cause of yellow light of death for each model type. Your contact email is optional. It is just for clarification purposes if there's any missing information in your response. If there's anything special or weird about your PS3, you can also mention it in the last entry. Let's contribute to the PS3 community together and keep our awesome PS3 alive. Thanks for watching. See you next time.